The postseason draft is over. And the Sacramento Kings. The excitement here is unbelievable. Are back on the court. Nobody even picked this to finish in a playoff spot. Loyal fans have been waiting for these moments. I've been here for the good, the bad, the ugly. We were here through thick and thin. And they're hoping the beam is back. Like the beam. Like the beam. Tonight, the craziest Kings collection. T-shirts, I would say around 250 to 300. The brand new fan art and merch. People are excited about this moment. And live reports with all the game day excitement. As the Kings take on the Golden State Warriors once again. In a KCRA 3 special, Kings Quest Playoff Pride. Thanks for joining us. I'm Lisa Gonzalez along with Dell Rogers. Game two is almost here. We are 30 minutes away from tip off and fans are so excited. It is a sea of purple Dell behind us. You know, about two hours before tip off, they opened up the Golden One Center gates and people were coming through the turnstiles <laughs> and there was so much excitement as they were walking in. I kind of felt like the game was going on. I mean, there was so much energy and excitement going on outside of the Golden One Center. So. I don't know what it's going to be like inside once that thing gets going, but I don't think anybody will be able to hear themselves because these fans, they want to make some noise. I've heard cowbells all day today outside of the Golden One Center. Yeah, game one was really loud. Both the Warriors players and Kings players talked about it. It was hard for all of the, the players and the coaches to even hear each other. They had to use hand signals for plays. <laughs> but uh, it's an electric environment that is very unique to the Golden One Center. And these fans are reared up and they are roaring and they are ready to go for a game two. Now, Speaking of game one, let's take a look and recap what went down as the Kings won 126 to 123. It came down to the final seconds, but the Sacramento Kings, they did grab game one. It went back and forth. They led by three at halftime, or led by six at halftime, and ended up winning by three, 126 to 123. A star for game one was Darren Fox. He's also known as fourth quarter Fox. He was playing in his first playoff game since being a Sacramento Kings player. He scored a game high 38 points and made a team high four three pointers. So needless to say, Darren Fox was a hero for game one. And what I like about game one, Lisa, is that DeMontis Sabonis, three-time All-Star for the Sacramento Kings, didn't have the game he had expected himself to have or that fans expected him to have. So when you reinsert him back into the element of production, what will the Kings do tonight in game two if yeah. DeMontis puts up any numbers that he has that he's averaged throughout the season. Absolutely, yeah. Foxy was on fire along with Malik Monk together. They totaled 70 points and that really helped the team. But tonight, when they're all playing well, it's going to be great. And the fans are so excited about it. I got to say, there's only about 10 to 12 percent of non-Kings fans on game one. And I think we're carrying that same percentage tonight for game two. KCR3's Jason Marks is down on the grounds of Doko right in front of the Golden One Center with all the fans. Jason? Yeah, you know, the, these are the fans, all these fans coming through the uh, metal detectors. Those are the fans that are actually going to go inside the stadium. And then you can see everyone who's kind of just lined up here. This is section 916 right here where they're starting to watch on the jumbotrons. And so a lot of excitement is here in this area. These are the fans who are making the noise outside, who can't unfortunately get in. And you know who's making a lot of noise right here. Courtney, Courtney, uh, yeah. you're a brave woman. Yes, I am. You're surrounded by Kings fans. I got my boy. <laughs> All right, let me ask you. Let me ask you a question. You were you were here for your birthday Saturday, right? Yeah, Saturday. And and, and they lost, and you're in the same exact spot. I would be I would be over there somewhere. Cause it's a good view to see the game. It's a good view to see the game. Are you, we out here are having you, fun. You're stirring it up, right? What? Yeah, we are. Yeah. Like the big now, now, you know, I know it's you know it's been tough being a Warriors fan since you guys all became Warrior fans in 2014. I know it's been tough. I know. I know. I know. I know. You it's since 2014. 2014. Okay. I asked them if I asked them if they if they were married at first, and they're no. I was like, they might they might want to think about it at this point. Guys, back to you. <laughs> 
<laughs> it is so much fun. It's already getting so loud. Jason, thank you so much. They're still coming in. They're just still trickling <laughs> in. For more from inside of the Golden One Center, let's turn, turn things out to KSRE 3, Michelle Dapper, who is inside the Golden One Center. Michelle. And that includes one diehard Kings fan from England who could not miss this opportunity to watch his beloved Kings in the playoffs for the first time in 17 years. I've always thought Sacramento is like Narnia for me, but I can text and I can look through the wardrobe and see it because you're so far away and it's such a, a foreign place. Um, it's just so far removed from where I am and what I do. Um, but I still go through the wardrobe once in a while. I come and play in Narnia, and it's amazing. And then I go back to England. Sacramento has been on Danny Williamson's radar since the early 90s. And he takes pride in being the UK's number one Kings fan. In 1994, when I was like, I need to choose a team, and I was going to put the pin in the map, it was like, I chose Sacramento because I had friends that were in San Mateo and staying local. I didn't want to be a Warriors fan. I didn't choose a winning team, I didn't want to do that. Seven years ago, Danny made the 5,000 mile trek from England to California's capital. Not to see the sights, but to meet up with a young sports reporter and check out a shiny new arena in the heart of downtown. They, they had the dream to build this place and, and we got it. When we first came, you still had all the boardings up, the construction boardings and none of these buildings were here. So Henry, my son, he's not seen, he's not seen any of it. Danny's love for the Kings has never wavered. He needs one more! Forever loyal while balancing the eight hour time difference. With 3.30 a.m. tip-offs and 3 a.m. tip-offs, 17 win seasons aren't fun. And then this one happened. Back in the playoffs for the first time in 17 years, Danny knew he had to book a flight. Yeah, it was good. It was 25 hours. We did 25 hours the first day to beat the um, to beat the jet lag. Danny handled the travel while the six man came through with the assist for tickets. Carmichael Dave was fantastic. He put it out there. He's got a ton of followers, so people with spare tickets were contacting me. We managed to get tickets. Um, through the, the generosity and kindness of strangers. See, I've got friends for life and people that are very kind and generous to me. A postseason pilgrimage with his son, priceless. We're Kings fans through and through, forever purple. Sacramento proud. Sacramento proud, and once again, the Sacramento community coming through, helping Danny and his son, Henry, of course, make it out to games one and two. Danny's beard, gotten a lot shorter. Danny's son, Henry, gotten from here to a lot taller, way above me now. But again, they were at game one. Hopefully they can get a, a win here on game two, going 2-0 two oh as they go back across the pond. Lisa, Dell. All right, good stuff, Michelle. Don't go anywhere because you're going to talk to Coach uh, Mike Brown a little bit later. You have that for us. So don't go anywhere. Stick where you're at. You bring, we bring, <laughs> we're going to bring you back. All right, Lisa. The beam team is the newest thing for this yeah. season. The beam team, the beam. It's like become the beam. an instant Colt Kings classic. Like the beam. And fans are making the coolest stuff. Melanie Wingo has more on that. <laughs> This cool concoction, a sweet way to deal with the heat of playoff fever. Really amazing. The coffee beam, a bright idea made by the confectionery creators at Crazy Antojitos. We poured our heart into this drink and it's it's really special to us. And hopefully we win. Another slam dunk for sweet toothed fans, King's Cookies and Cakes. The energy around the light, the beam and the team this year, is, you yeah. can feel it in the yeah. city. Handmade by Justine and Candace Cavanilla of Rancho Cordova's sugar sweetery, these desserts are definitely winners. It means the world to us that we get to celebrate not just birthdays and wedding celebrations, but also our community coming together and possibly winning the, you know, playoffs. 
The King's playoff presence has fans wearing their hearts on their sleeves and beaming with pride. The demand has been high and it's inspired me to continue to create more designs. So the excitement the behind Hannah Howerton's designs made even more special when she sees them out in the wild. Going to the King's game and seeing people wearing the shirts. Sacramentans sporting her unique depictions of local landmarks alongside an illuminated purple beam. I've walked by someone who's wearing it and it's just that part it really feels great. Set notes are citrus, sandalwood, musk, amber, basketball, and winning. Marissa Greenband of Fish and Chip Craft Co. I had the idea when we were sitting at home watching an away game on the TV one night. The artisan behind this light the beam candle. As the candle burns, um, the color up top will get a little bit of a darker purple and it glitters out from the flame in the middle. Customers even connecting through an interactive ritual. They like light their candle when the game's going on and they're watching from home. And tagging her social handles with pics of their lit candles. Really is like lighting the beam at home. Melanie Wingo, KCRA 3 News. All right, the Sacramento Kings keepsake continue. Next, we'll take you to the kingdom to show you some pretty crazy collections of Kings memorabilia. The really cool thing about our team and our organization here is uh, we look at it through a lot of different lenses. Coming up, my one-on-one -on -one interview with the architect behind this playoff team, the general manager, Monty McNair, his keys to success. Welcome back to KSRA 3's special, King's Quest. You're looking at a live picture from inside the Golden One Center where momentarily we will join KSRA 3 Michelle Dapper who is live inside of the Golden One Center waiting for tip-off tonight. She'll have a 
uh, talk to with uh, Coach Mike Brown coming up a little bit later in our special. Now, over to Ms. to Lisa Gonzalez, who's standing <laughs> right next to me over there. <laughs> over there. In the meantime, the Kings fans are <laughs> rearing to go. They want everyone to feel their roar, especially around the Northern California. KCRA3's Jason Marks is learning firsthand some of the crazy collections Kings fans have. Right, Jason? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, take a look, Lisa. All those Kings fans down there, each of them dressed out in their Kings gear. But I recently caught up with one Kings fan who believes he's got more gear than any of them. Fox one on one against McCollum. This season, more than any other. Off to a slow start at the offensive end. Here's Trey Lyles. Sacramento TVs are on. Kings fans glued in front. Beautiful. 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 I get home in time, I throw on the jacket, throw on the crown, and then we let the magic happen from there. This is where you'll find Christo Remedicato and Ryan Clark, buddies since middle school. Beautiful. Let's go. Let's go. And for the first time in their friendship, they have a team to root for past the regular season. Herder scoring first. There we go. Remedicato is a longtime Kings lover. Last time they were uh, in the playoffs was 2006, so I was nine. <laughs> nine years old. He not only walks the walk. I would say I'm one of the biggest Kings fans out there. But he's here to talk the talk. Look around. I've been collecting Kings gear for basically my whole life. And over time, it's added up. I think this is the funniest thing they ever made. They made a Chris Webber rubber duck. I don't know why they made it, but they decided to make another one for Mike Bibby. This is just amazing. These are Sacramento Kings Oreos. The, the Peja Russian dolls. Every Sacramento Kings fan should have, should have this set right here. De'Aaron Fox was able to collaborate with Nike on a pair of Air Max shoes, and I wear these every single game. The 1987 and 1988 Sacramento Kings calendar this is everyone's favorite right here, the guitar wall clock. Mike Bibby and Peja Stojakovic toothbrushes. In his left, his 828 square foot apartment crammed, but oozing purple. It's difficult to, to maintain everything. His collection doesn't end with bobbleheads, pats, or throw rugs. <laughs> That's actually just the start. Okay, one, two, three, four, because five, Because as six, you see, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20, 20, 20. He believes he has the crown for the most King's t-shirts in Northern California. Number one, number one. I'm not even, I don't even want to, to debate it. 31, 32, 33, 34, 35. I have around 250 to 300 shirts. Dribble in his 34 jerseys. Not bad, not bad. Not to mention another 30 jackets. This one I had to really debate. Is it worth getting this one? <laughs> this one retail was $800. Now you can see why he believes he's tops when it comes to collectible royalty. Mike Bibby, also I got to meet him as well and he signed this for me. If my confidence is correct, I think, I, I think I'm number one. The good news for Remy Takato is he'll stay surrounded by Kings gear through the playoffs. If the Kings win the championship this year, this will never leave. Yeah, never leave. The catch is that his girlfriend says he can have that stuff as long as the Kings are in the playoffs. So, of course, guys, he's hoping that playoff run will continue as long as it can. Now back to you. Good stuff out there, Jason. Very good stuff. Lisa, You got. I got two words for you. Monty McNair. Yeah, the architect behind this playoff team, I sat down with him to talk about the success they have seen since he came here in 2020. No, it's been uh, it's been fun. You know, our group really came in three years ago, and uh, you know we knew this is where we wanted to get to as step one, and uh, to finally be there in the playoffs. Is this how you envisioned this all happening, and did you think it would happen this quickly with Coach Brown? We knew Coach Brown was going to come in here and, and put his stamp on things because that's what he's done uh, throughout his whole career. Uh, over 30 years in the NBA, many organizations, uh, tons of success, multi-time champion. There's a lot of new things this year, and uh, to see them all come together, um, it's, it's really been a dream season in a lot of ways. Is it all happening 
according to your master plan. Yeah, I, I wish I wish we could all point to uh, this is exactly how we envision things yeah. going. But but our group, what we do is we try to make the best bets we can. And, you know, our individual players have all stepped up and, and had great success this year. I know you're a numbers and stats guy, but some of that gelling, you don't necessarily see that on the stat sheet, right? Well, it's... And, uh, but is that was that just you analyzing the individual personalities and that sort of thing, or was that just luck? Well, there's there's a lot that goes into it. And uh, the, the, the really cool thing about our team and our organization here is um, we look at it through a lot of different lenses. And I've said this before in the draft, but now we're seeing on the court, uh, you know, when, when what we see uh, in the numbers, what our scouts see, and now what our coaches see all lines up, uh, we feel confident. When did your love of like stats and numbers and sports stats, when did that develop? Probably from a pretty early age with the numbers. Um, I, I do remember Moneyball, the book came out, yeah. which was, you know, I, I was playing football in college um, at Princeton. And so that kind of hit a lot of, a lot of sweet spots. I was a computer science major. So the intersection of those two things as I got into high school, college, and then um, ultimately my career, you know, was, was I think a perfect, um, you know, kind of gateway into, into professional sports. And, um, you know, if you can't be on the floor, uh, being around the team is the next best thing. As a dad, what does it mean to you to have, you know, be able to take your daughter to a playoff game? I saw you there with her in her adorable princess outfit. It was the cutest thing I've ever seen. Having them here and, you know, my wife gets to, she brings them to the games, uh, get to sit with her. And uh, I have a, my oldest daughter uh, is, you know, talking about the team and uh, every time she sees the logo, uh, she's starting to read stuff now, which is great. My, my son, who's four, is is all about basketball for the first time this year and, and knows all our players. Uh, it's fantastic. He likes to sit out in the stands a lot. He's got, he's, he said he's growing his hair out for the playoffs, so he's already got long hair, uh, but he's growing it out and he's, he's had a, a blast. And then my two-year-old, uh, you know, we'll, we'll be in the car and my son likes to do the, the Keegan Murray chant. And so he'll say it and my two-year-old will, will finish it uh, with the Murray chant. So the whole family's uh, bought in, enjoying it. Uh, obviously it's been a fun season, but um, to have it not just be a professional uh, success, but, but personally to, to see uh, my wife and, and our three little ones enjoy it with me uh, has been a, a absolute blast. Yeah, it just makes the success yeah. so much sweeter enjoying it with his family as well. Fans are excited because he just signed a contract extension. He'll at least be here three more years. Three more years, that's great. As we go to a commercial break, let's take another look inside the Golden One Center. Where when we come back after that commercial break, we will listen to Michelle's interview with Coach Mike Brown moments before the Kings take on the Golden State Warriors in game two of the first round of the NBA playoffs. We'll be right back.
minutes away from tip-off between the Warriors and the Kings. Kings leading the series right now, 1-0. Game two is about to get underway. And for more from head coach Mike Brown, who Michelle Dapper had a chance to talk to earlier today, let's toss things inside the Golden One Center where Michelle is in the mezzanine area. Michelle. Yeah, everyone's calling this series a chess match. Head coach Mike Brown and head coach Steve Kerr know each other very well. So the adjustments throughout this series that both coaches make are going to be very interesting. But one coach hopes to say checkmate and win this series. Uh, my partner, uh, her daughter plays for the eighth grade girls team at Rolling Hills. I'd rather be in a chess match with her coach. <laughs> <laughs> out in Rolling Hills, El Dorado, than Steve Kerr. Um, other than that, it is what it is. We gotta, we gotta try to figure it out, just like he's gotta figure it out. You know, it's obviously um, great fun. Um, you know, trying to compete at the highest level with the uh, with the reigning NBA champions, and uh, Steve is. <clears throat> first ballot Hall of Famer. And Mike is one of my best friends in the league, and um, we uh, we know each other well. Obviously, he knows our team probably better than anybody um, outside of our own group. So um, it's fun. They, the playoffs are always fun. This is the um, you know the highest level of basketball. It's a completely different level of preparation that goes into each game. I, I love MMA and you know when you watch the championship fights uh, you have to go take the belt from the champion. <laughs> you know you're not outpointing anybody so you know, we might as well take our jabs and throw them things out the window and just keep throwing haymakers because it's going to be a dog fight that's going to be hard and we have to uh, embrace that and go do it if we expect to get where we want to go. Well, of course, a chess game, boxing match, basketball game. Either way, get your cowbell ready and your rally towels, guys. Lisa, this one's for you. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Michelle. For Michelle Dapper, Lisa Gonzalez, Jason Marks, and Bill Rogers, thank you for watching the King's Quest. We hope the Kings win game two tonight. Go Kings!